Okay, folks, uh, today we are going to talk about balancing chemical reactions. First of all, you should do this warm up. Uh, if you could, please pause this video so that the students have about uh, three minutes would be plenty for them to do this and come on back and we will do it together. All right, guys, please bear with me. Um, I'm using a little active slate here. It's new to me, so it's this screencast thing but we will uh, work through it. So what do I do first here? I distribute my subscript, okay? So it only applies to the guys in the parentheses. So I'm gonna end up here with how many P's? Three. How many O's? 12. And this three will not change my AL in any way, okay? So I'll still have AL two. My writing's horrible on here, but you guys will just have to deal with it. Next, I'm going to distribute my 5. It applies to everybody because it's like having brackets here. Remember that? So I'm going to end up with AL10, P15, O60, I believe, if I do off the top of my head, for a total of 85 atoms. Hope I was right. I'm sure if I was wrong, you'll let me know. So hopefully you remember that. We are going to talk about chemical reactions. Um, follow along on the note sheet that you have been provided here. What we are doing is we're going to talk about essentially an introduction to chemical reactions and the making of new substances. You remember the difference between a physical and chemical change. Chemical change, you can't get it back. You made something new. So that is essentially what we're talking about here, but we're going to put it into a formula. So starting out. Chemical reactions are represented by chemical equations. Just like in math, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Uh, hydrogen plus oxygen equals water. So that is what we are doing here. We're talking about these different chemical reactions that we represent by writing an equation. All right, so here's the important part. Chemical equations are balanced to show the same number of atoms of the element on each side. And the reason this occurs is because um, some old scientist guy decided that we would have the law of conservation of mass. And what that law says is that atoms can't be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. That's why you have to balance them. That's like saying you can't lose weight unless you eat less calories or you go work out, right? You have to do something to make the change. You can't just wish that it would happen. You can't just get rid of the pounds or the calories or gain the pounds or calories. You have to do something. Um, and essentially what we're saying here is if I put in one oxygen, I will get out one oxygen. If I put in 20 oxygens, I'll get out 20. And you'll see a lot of that as we balance these guys out. Okay. So let's review real quick the type of chemical reactions that we know about uh, this is just an example, cooking. I decide to fry an egg up for breakfast. Um, when I do, I need to ask myself a few questions to see if a chemical change has occurred. First of all, did I make a new substance? Well, it's still an egg, so the answer to that question is a toughie. But did I, uh, can I get it back? Can I get it back? I can't get my raw egg back. I only have my cooked egg now. I can't get it back. That tells me chemical change respiration. You're doing it right now. I hope you're doing it and not sleeping. I hope you're wide awake and you're uh, respiring. So what you're doing is the sugars inside you from that energy drink or that coffee you had this morning and the oxygen you're breathing in from the air around you uh, is coming together to form on the other side, coming out some carbon dioxide, some water, probably sweating it out and some energy. Use all that energy to learn chemistry. Now here are some other examples. Hair dye, dyeing your hair. You can get it back, but only through another chemical change. So that's a chemical change. Fuel in your car. Chemical changes are occurring. You're creating something new. Now a color change. Not always a chemical change. In this case, the apple got all gross. That is a chemical change. But let's say you made some Kool-Aid not a chemical change. I can get it back. Precipitate. What's a precipitate? Someone remembers? 
Remind the class. Pause it if you have to. We should know what a precipitate is. I'll leave it up to you to figure that out. Maybe it'll be on a quiz when I get back. Okay. So, here's what we have to know. Chemical changes in matter are written as chemical equations. And what happens is those formulas do change because bonds are broken and remade. We make new substances. And here's the four ways we can spot them. A color change, okay, a color change can be a sign of a chemical change. Isn't always, but sometimes. So let's say like rust. A precipitate is made. What's that precipitate? Hmm, hope you all remember. It forms a gas. That's when you see bubbles. Okay, and lastly, a temperature change. Sometimes this is chemical. Sometimes it's physical. If it catches on fire, definitely chemical. Fire. Yeah. All right, pause this, please, so that they can get this written down into their notes. Moving on. Now, here's how an equation is written. First of all, on the left side of the arrow here, you will always have your original substance. Then you'll have your arrow, and on the right side, you have whatever you made that was new. So this is your raw egg. Cooked it up on the stove, you made a fried egg. The arrow here means changes to or yields. It can also mean produces. Okay, produces. Sorry, it looks bad. So that can also mean produces. Here's an example. Um, it tells what happens and shows the change. And on the left, we have reactant A and reactant B that come together to form a product. This is important because on the left, these guys are always called reactants. There can be one, there can be two, there can be 200, okay? But none of them will be on the product side. This will always be something new. There can also be one, two, or a hundred products. But either way, they'll always have the same ingredients, but be a different chemical makeup. Now, th these reactants are all used up in forming the product. That doesn't mean they went away. Law of conservation of mass says they have to stay here. So what happened was we made something new. We created that chemical change. Here's our example. So I decided to make a steak. I go outside, I burn up some charcoal, set it on fire. Okay, what I need for that is my actual charcoal, which is made of what element is that? Carbon. Some air, that oxygen there, and some heat. I might throw a match in there, or I could throw in Trevor's uh, elemental symbol from the hallway. This results in, or yields, or produces, or changes to carbon dioxide gas. There's a chemical equation right there. So that's an example of a chemical equation. All right. What's next? All right, an example here. Reactants here are on the left. I want to know how many. How many H's do I have? Four. How many oxygens? Well, that two doesn't apply to it, so I only have two. This guy applies to everything. How many H's? Four. How many O's? Two. Let's see, are they equal? Two and two? Four and four? They are. This is what I would call being a balanced equation. Now, remember, reactants are always going to be on the left. Products are always going to be on the right. Here's a real-life example. Take some eggs, put them in a flour with some, put them in a bowl with some flour, some sugar, some cocoa. Throw them in the oven. What do I get out? Delicious brownies. Same ingredients, different product. Reactants are what I mix together. Products are what I got out. All right, let's practice. So when I balance chemical reactions, here's the things I need to do. The number of atoms on the left side must equal the number of atoms on the right side. In order to make that happen, I have to add in a coefficient. We already know what a coefficient is. He's that number out in front. This coefficient changed me from having two to having four. It changed this one from having one to having two. You can only change your coefficients. Don't change your subscript. Do not change them. Never go in here and just put a two here. You can't do it. You can only change your coefficient. 
There's an example down here. I had one carbon on each side. They're the purple ones, two oxygens. It's balanced. Okay, it's balanced. All right, and here's some tips. You might want to pause it so they can write these down. The one is understood. Okay, it doesn't have to be written as coefficient. So that's like saying I have H2O. If there's nothing written here, I'm going to assume it's a one. Okay, now if I do have something written here, and it's a 2, it distributes throughout, but I'm also assuming there's a little 1 right here. So these 1's are assumed or understood. Now, I'll give you an example of how they should be reduced here in a little bit. Um, also, balance the most complex first, and then move to your single atoms, and double check your work. This is so important. You're going to be so upset when you get one wrong because you forgot to double check, and you could have gotten that one right. So make sure you go double check. All right, pause it if they need to copy. Next up, let's do one. What I call it is doing a rep. Okay, you go to the gym. You do some repetitions to get buffer. Here's how you do it. Make a table. R, E, P. What do you think the R stands for? Reactants. These guys. What do you think the E stands for? Elements. And what do you think the P stands for? Products. Okay, here's what I do. List out the elements that are participating here. I've got me some hydrogen. Got a little bit of oxygen. And then I list the amounts. On the reactant side, how many hydrogens do I have? Well, to figure it out, I'm going to go plug some ones into my blanks here. I'm also going to put a little 1 right here so I don't get confused. Distribute, 1 times 2 gives me 2 hydrogens. 1 times 2 gives me 2 oxygens. Over here, 1 times 2 gives me 2 hydrogens. 1 times 1 gives me 1 oxygen. According to the law of conservation of mass, this has to be equal on both sides. Well, my oxygen isn't. So the only thing I can change to get my oxygen equal is to go up here and change this 1 to a 2. You cannot change this subscript. You absolutely cannot change this subscript. You can only change this. Well, when I change him, he applies to the hydrogen and the oxygen. Now I have 2 times 2. 4 hydrogen. Go change it in your table. Now I have 2 times 1. 2 oxygens. Go change it in your table. Now check. Is everybody happy? 2 oxygens on each side. Hooray! Four hydrogens here, two here. Does not support the law of conservation of mass. To get four hydrogens over here, I'm going to go cross out my one and put a two here and distribute. Two times two is four. My hydrogen's happy now. Hurry, buddy's happy. Yay! You just balanced your first equation. Okay, give this one a shot. I'm going to erase my stuff so positive they need to copy. Give this guy a shot down here. All I want you to do is set up your ERP, your, your rep table, and I will come back and show you how to balance this one out in my next video installment. Good job, guys.